Hello, forever friends and family. I would like to welcome everybody to our webinar number 11th. I cannot believe it's number 11. Building an empire, the most complete blueprint to building a massive network marketing business written by Brian Garothers. And again, today is number 11. And we continue our journey to read, to study, to discuss and implement the skills, knowledge, advice, and technique from this outstanding book. And I would like to share with you that I finished this book, completed this book yesterday, 100%. And guess what? I'm gonna start it again over through my comments. And I would like to ask to start to read this book, my friend and partner from Brooklyn, New York, Supervisor Isaac Gilbinovich. Isaac, please unmute your microphone. Good evening, everybody. Go ahead, Isaac. I just see the cover. Good, read the cover. <laughs> Building an empire. The most complete blueprint to building a massive network marketing business, Brian Caruder. We're going to continue through this chapter, massive communication equals sign massive income. Isaac, please go ahead. Massive communication equal massive income. In 1998, my mentor said to me, the size of your phone bill will determine the size of your check. So I decided that I would use my phone all day and night and run up my bill. I was hungry and ambitious, and I took him at his word. He was a millionaire in this industry, and I believed he was right. So I learned through my own experience that massive communication equal massive income. We are in a people's business or the people moving business. Thus, we are in the communication business. In order to move people to action, we must communicate with them. If I want to rec rec recruit people, I need to communicate my business opportunity to my prospects. If I want my downline to get their prospects on a conference call or to an event, I must promote this by communicating it to them. Remember this, we are networkers. We get paid to connect and communicate on a personal level. That is why the companies we are distributors for pay us so much money. A company cannot reach and connect with people on a personal level. It just isn't possible. That is the value we bring and that we must bring. If we expect to earn income, in recent years, so many networkers have been fooled into thinking, hoping that sending emails, texts, or social media messages would create the connection with people. While I admit that this can serve a purpose, they will never replace the need for human interaction. Did you miss it? The word, is, the word I just used was interaction. This means you are not just sending out your ideas, uh, th uh, thoughts, or wishes. Rather, you are conveying this in an interactive, engaging way. Massive communication could be mistaken for one-way communication from your outward, from you outward. So instead, I change my premise to the need for massive communication. We must connect with people, connect our prospects, meet with their solution, which is our product or opportunity. Connect our team members' goals with the proven activity we want them to engage in to succeed, in, in, into success, succeed, sorry. And connect with each member of our teams, showing we really care about their success. So how do I spend my time? I spend 25% of my day in each of the four areas demonstrated in the following illustration. Time, 25% contacting my own new prospects to recruit, 25%
following up on my own ex existing prospects on my list. 25% doing three-way call third-party closes for my team. 25% calling my team to promote something and inspire action. This brings us back to IPA, income producing activity. If you are not talking to a prospect, yours or your teams to bring them to a de decision, you are not making money. So 75% of my time is devoted to this always. Even now, after earning more than 15 million and continuing, I still honor this strategy. Why? Because what, go, what, what got me here will keep taking me up the elevator shaft. 25% of my time is focused on leadership, management type activity. I see so many networkers slow down on their prospecting and follow ups and focus more on motivating their team. They go from leading by example to telling people what to do. I prefer to show them what I do and ask them if they can follow my lead. It has not failed me yet, but maybe that is because I'm not lazy and I care about my team members achieving their goal. Welcome calls. Immediately, when you recruit a new person onto your team, you must get them on welcome call with at least two or three of your upline. By introducing this new, often skeptical person to people who are already successful in the business, you make the business more real to them. This reaffirms their goal decision to join the company and increases their belief in the opportunity. The last thing you want your recruit to do is have their only association with the company be you. Forbid the idea that they do not see you as someone they aspire to be like. You want them to meet people they will be inspired by and trust that their future is in the hands of good mentors. This will also make them feel like they are part of a team. Remember that people will be less likely to quit on a team than they will on themselves. Here are the six items for the upline to address on this welcome call. Five, seven minutes maximum. Tell your story. Number two, ask for their why. Number three, paint the vision of the company, then for recruits, then for the recruits' future. Number four, explain and book their PBR and PCC. PZC, tell a PBR or Zoom webinar success story. Number five, encourage game plan interview with sponsor or, or veteran upline. Number six, promote training class and weekly briefings. Number seven, edify their sponsor and the two full-time upline leaders they will be working with. Am I a great sponsor? One of the common reasons I fear from I hear from people who quit their network marketing business is because they did not have a good sponsor. So what does it mean to be a good sponsor? I believe it has much to do with being a great example of work ethics, discipline, integrity, belief, reliability, and vision. People want to follow someone who is a visionary a leader who sees great things ahead and can lead the way to build something grand. A great sponsor believes in the vision in himself and in his people. You will quickly kill off any team you build if they sense that your mission is to recruit some people and then sit back, uh, sit back and wait for them to start making you money. Nobody wants to make money for his or her upline. Rather, they want their upline to earn the overrides that will be generated. Your team expects that you will work hard to help them succeed. And in return, the camp plan will automatically 
reward you for doing the work. So a good sponsor puts the, net, the need of his her people first, helps them make money first, and possesses a strong work ethics. He leads by positive example, doing the activity that he wants his team to emulate. That is one of the main reasons why I built one of the largest team in the entire industry in the decade 2000 to 2010, more than 300,000 reps. I never let anyone feel like they were out outworking me. I heard so many compliments over the years that they admired how hard I worked in such a focused way. Folks, that's what I take. That's what it takes. Consistent work ethics, period. Would it, working is key, but so is doing it with belief, passion, and energy. A great sponsor inspires others to believe in their dreams and to go for it. You, you constantly have to be on, meaning your music must be positive and uplifting. Never speak negatively or disbelieving to your downline, ever. Negative always goes upline. Positive always goes everywhere. Your upline needs to hear positive from you too. Discipline is something that people notice. They know whether you are making your calls, showing up to events, listening to team calls, reading good books, and staying in, in phase one, personally prospecting. They also can see. Mike, hold on for one second, please. I don't want to miss it to add something to previous page because it's really valuable. I know a long time ago. Don't cry downline. Smile downline. If you want to cry, cry upline. I mean sponsor. Don't complain downline. Complain upline. That's it. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> they also can see whether you are a disciplined leader they wish to follow by your health, fitness, diet, and finances. People will only want to follow someone they see as a good role model in all areas of life. So the more well-rounded your discipline are, the better. Integrity is a big one. Do what you say you are going to do. If you promise to give someone some tools, do it. If you say you will give them a, rec a recruit, do it. Do what is right and ethical. Never steal anything from anyone. Don't lie about your income. Do not have affairs with anyone in your business. Integrity is doing what's right when nobody is looking. Just remember, time will expose or promote everyone. Let your actions over time promote you as a truly amazing example of leadership and goodness. Are you reliable? Have you ever promised a recruit you would do a call for them, but then you were not available when promised? Or a PBR? Did you tell a recruit you would make some calls to their list, but never got around it? Have you offered up an instant an incentive, but never honor, honored it. When your recruit or team feels that you cannot count on you, that they cannot count on you, then you are toast. They will never truly follow you and will soon leave you. Be a man or woman of your word. Be accessible as much as you can be. Be a servant leader by putting their interest first. Trust me, your massive following of supporters will boost you up in glory in the end if you do. Thank you, Isaac. Please take a break. Thank you for your reading. And I would like to ask friend and partner manager from Brooklyn, Helen Osipov, please continue. Unmute your microphone and please go ahead. The power of a mentor. Good evening, everybody. Uh, the power of a me mentor. Not long ago, I spoke at a GoPro event with the likes of Lou Holtz, Harvey McKay, Eric Thomas, Grant Cardone, and other top mentors or speakers. The host, Eric Worre, 
reminded the crowd that the most valuable thing you can find in life is a mentor. I can tell you this is absolute truth. Grand Cardone made a statement that was quite profound. He said, he hears speakers always saying that you should keep failing your way forward and to fail faster. The premise is to learn from your mistakes and get better. But Grant said he would rather learn from other pe people's mistakes who, so he doesn't have to make those same mistakes himself. Avoid making mistakes altogether. That's genius. Sure, you cannot avoid failing. And yes, you should learn from each failure. But a mentor who has already been down the path you are on and has hit obstacles and found his way around them can help you avoid those pitfalls and speed up your navigation of your success curve. So what is a mentor? I feel this term is thrown around loosely and is a label for pretty much anyone who, who people are asking for help. Here is my definition. A real mentor is someone who has achieved greatness in that which you are pursuing, whom you can learn from and get a system towards your ultimate success. The ultimate mentor is willing to take their valuable time to teach you and help you do what they are done. But sometimes you aren't so lucky and as, as to have the personally available to you. So you have to read their books or attend their classes. A mentor expands your belief and vision. They help you to adopt their philosophies, mindset, attitude, and skills that help them achieve the great results. Mentors can teach you the highest and best use of your, your time, helping you to get the most from your effort, as well as avoid their mistakes, saving you time, money, and frustration. A mentor is different than a workout or accountability partner. In the latter, you are peers on the same come up journey. You are learning together, growing together and doing the business together. You can hold each other accountable, which is extremely helpful so that you keep each other on the track. But a mentor does not need you to hold him accountable or to help him. Rather, you need him. You are his student. You may be paying him handsomely to get some of this time to guide you, or maybe he's compensated in some other way. Perhaps he is in your network marketing upline and the company pays him an override on your team sales. A mentor needs to be someone you have big respect for. You must cherish the attention he gives you and you must constantly show appreciation for his time and help. In order for him to be your mentor, you must show up on the X and be coachable. A mentor must have a mentee. Ask your, yourself if you ever thought you had someone mentoring you where maybe you didn't show up consistently with a coachable attitude. If this is the case, you never had a mentoring relationship. It does not work if you don't show up and do your part. Your mentor may give you advice and expect that you will act upon it. If not, why will he bother wasting his breath on you any longer? Have you ever heard of question it versus question me? It is accessible, acceptable to ask questions to understand. When your mentor gives you advice, you should want to learn why he feels that is the best action to take. Learning how to think and why your mentor is advising you a certain way on the subject is important, just as long as you are questioning the advice and not the person. If you, if you question the mentor's knowledge or credibility, this means you don't respect and trust their opinion. So they cannot fulfill the role as your mentor and there really is no mentorship happening. Your mentor needs to know that you truly value their expertise and will take action on it. Otherwise, 
your mentor will vanish from you like the wind, and rightfully so. And you may never again find someone willing to pour into you and help you win. Long distance sponsoring. I have had quite a few prospects tell me that they were interested in my business, but wanted to find themselves someone to sponsor them in their local marketplace instead. They insisted they would need in-person training and hand-holding in order to succeed. So I had to share with them what my applying taught me. My active applying who became my main mentor in my beginning years was in Texas while I lived and built in Maryland. I told him I wished he lived in Maryland so he could help me more. Oh, he hold on me. for a second, please. Mm -hmm. Because it's a really wonderful subject for everybody to think it over again that his potential partner said, okay, I need somebody to be local with me. And there are many examples here, at least two examples. I sponsored Nina in 2008. I was in Brooklyn, New York, and still in Brooklyn, New York, and she was in Missouri. We got in touch on the media. We built some friendship for some period of time. Then I sponsored her. Nina sponsored Helen Osipo, who is reading now. Nina was in Missouri, Helen Osipo was in Brooklyn, and I get that everybody here knows this story, right? Then that's two, at least two perfect examples how this business works. It's not necessary to have somebody to work with us hand by hand to help us to start or continue to do business. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hold on, Nina, raise your hand. Hold on for a second. Nina, please go ahead. Uh, yes, I want to uh, say uh, it's not only these two examples because uh, we work not only in the United States. We work in, with uh, people in other countries and uh, probably with most of the people I never uh, met uh, in the future and never see them and they never see me. And when you... Uh, invite me to, to develop a business with you. I was so surprised. I was thinking I need to fly to New York, and learn from you something in this business. And uh, <laughs> uh, when it was not so, I was very surprised and how amazingly works this business. It's just, uh, it's, it's perfect way to learn uh, how to make money from home, from kitchen. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Nina, for your input. Helen, please go ahead. Uh, thanks. He said to me, no, you don't want that. If my presence with you is required to succeed, that would mean you will never be, to be able to sponsor someone out of state and help them to succeed. Do you want your team to only be limited to your particular state or to span all across the continent? Because if a local mentor was a requirement to succeed, you could never accomplish your goal. A local sponsor can only teach you how to build locally. I can teach you to success, succeed all the way from here in Texas, thereby showing you exactly how to duplicate that will all of the countless people you wish to sponsor and train all over the country. Wow. This was an awakening. I have shared this premise with every long distance prospect, and it is rare that this message doesn't fix their thinking. Having a long distance mentor also gave me the space and breathing room to become a strong independent leader. Of course, I never broke away from my upline. We stayed interconnected, but I became a market leader Sometimes having a great upline, especially locally, causes most people to never need to, to become great leaders. So they often don't. When long distance sponsoring, not much changes, really. You still promote and plug people into the system. 
the only thing that you cannot do is be, be there physically for PBRs, but you can call into them via speaker phone to close them out after the video. And you can be there at briefings to circle up, but you will teach your upcoming leaders to step up and be the leader to take that role. For everything else, you are a phone call away, just like you would be if you were only 10 miles down the road. Don't let long distance build, building be scary to you. With phones and technology today, the world is basically now your backyard. You can support your team and build com uh, community by leveraging the system. Whatever you expect happens. So expect to build across the map very quickly. Grab their top 10. From the moment you recruit someone, the race is on. Those first seven days are critical. You are trying to get them a sale or a recruit before they quit. Every day that ticks by without some success, their fire is dying down. The, the excitement they first had when they joined and the feeling that they will go sign up the world is declining. They are talking to people who are not interested. Self-doubt starts kicking in. They are wondering if they made a good decision or if they, they even want to invest any more time into this pursuit. So the race is on for you to help them work their contact list. Hold on for a second, Helen. Please forgive me. Again, I just would like to emphasize this top red portion I highlighted just now. It was yellow because I'm reading a lot this uh, book from my other Kindle, which has only one color. But here I emphasize in the red color, the first seven days is crucial because enthusiasm, enthusiasm might gone forever with forever. They got so many negative responses, and special if we did not warn them, do not talk to anybody yet, that we have to train and help them. Three-way calls, the best approach. Three-way calls, new person, sponsor or sponsor of the sponsor and prospect. It's a super powerful and very, very effective. Thank you, Helen. Mm -hmm. They need to have their decision to get started reinforced by someone they, they know buying the product or becoming a part of their team. Of course, getting a recruit goes miles further in reinforcing their business decision, but any win will do. Excuse me, Helen, again, your uh -huh. sponsor, <laughs> Nina, raised your hand. Mm -hmm. Nina, please go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm sorry I, I interrupt you, but I, I cannot uh, not to say because uh, I see how works three-way calls just great. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a just greatest tool that I ever see in my life because when I become uh, develop my business with Alex and we had together so many calls to my uh, new downlines. I don't know, just many, many. And it's helped because when I be become assistant supervisor, I didn't know, of course, how this business works. And uh, when we call together with Alex to my friends and uh, I hear how he talk, what he tell person, how he answer questions. And time, uh, time by time, uh, from one call to next call, and. I learn how to do that myself. And later when my downline start growing and I was able to uh, do three-way calls myself uh, with my uh, first downline to the downline and uh, it's supposed to duplicate all the time. And even now uh, I always introduce my new uh, downline person to my sponsor and um, we do three-way calls minimum two times per week with him. And uh, uh, it works uh, very well. And uh, especially uh, when, uh, if I find a woman for business 
And it's great if uh, her husband could talk to my sponsor like man and man. It works very good. So I suggest everyone follow the system and do three-way calls. And you will see how your team will grow up. Mm -hmm. And I just would like to add to Nina's comment that Nina is very, very powerful and skillful. She knows how to talk to prospect. She knows how to take care about business, how to cover products, subject. It's not the point. The point is that she show to her prospect that she has a support. And it happened couple, not couple, it's happened many times that Nina called me and she said, you know what, I have a person, would you take care about this person? Can you make a three-way calls with her because I will be busy at the same time? No problem. And it was very effective and it was very, very good. Helen, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Remember that they don't know what to say when they are calling their prospects. They are worried about this. They may work through the fear and make some calls, but surely we cannot expect that those first calls will be brilliant. We want them to persevere making these calls anyway. If they are going to learn to swim, they've got to go uh, to get into the pool and start flapping around. As the great apply networker you are or a, are becoming, you will not allow your success in theirs to be left in their hands alone. You are going to get a copy of their list and discuss who the top 10 sharpest, most ambitious contacts are on it. Then you will leverage your mutual connection and make these calls yourself. Your goal may be to sell the product or recruit, to recruit them. Either way, the new recruit will let you call these 10 while they cut their teeth on the others on their list. One thing that does help is having the recruit send a short text or email to this top 10 to warm it up for your, you first. So the day you are going to start calling, have them send a message something like, Hi, John, a gentleman named such and such is going to call you today about something very important and private. Be sure to take his call for a few minutes. We'll talk later. Now, and willing to take your call. This is not the only time you will hear the talk. your downline, all you need is how your people recruit Well, I'm sorry, I'm afraid something happened to your connection for some reason. You interrupted a couple of times. Or maybe I'm my sorry. connection. Okay, to build your downline. All you need to do is help your people recruit their contact. Put down. Doing this for each recruit who joins, you will watch your team grow level by level. If you help each recruit get their first recruit with their first week, in one year, you are 52 levels deep, including what their other legs come. But if you don't help them recruit someone in their first week, you will likely have lost them and will have to keep, keep recruiting their team immediately, even those, even those brought in way below you by others. Reach down, grab them, and run. Helen, hold on, hold on for a second. Nina, please confirm, or somebody please unmute your microphone five. and confirm, you... confirm that you could hear everything Helen read. Because I have a lot of interference. Yes, I did. 
Mm -hmm. Please repeat what you said, Nina, I'm sorry. Yes, it was good. I hear everything. Oh, okay, so I believe it's enough for, for Helen. Helen, thank you very kindly. Let's continue to move forward. And I would like to ask okay. friend and the most reliable manager from New Jersey, Iris Cristobal, please continue part five, motivate your employer. Thank you, Alex. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Helen, and thank you, Isaac. Chapter five, motivate your empire. Leadership versus management. Years ago, all the talk was about how great management was the key to a company's success. These days, the paradigm sh has shifted. We see leadership as a paramount to success. There's a huge difference between the two. And when you get it, you will get why some people make it big in network marketing and others do not. Managers see it as their task to get others to do what the company wants them to do. Leaders get the people to want to do themselves, whatever the company is wanting. Can you clearly see the difference? If you work for a company and your manager wants you to go sell 10 units this month, the manager is going to manage you by convincing you why this goal must be met. Managers use tactics based on the carrot or the stick. Sell 10 units or else you will not keep your job. So fear of losing your job is used to manipulate you into motivation. Or they might dangle a promotion in your face to get you to work harder. Management tactics do not work very well. Yet even if they achieve the intended result, the employee is not connected emotionally with the process and therefore the motivation cannot be lasting. A leader, on the other hand, takes a completely different approach. Leaders lead people. They share a vision that embodies both the company and the person together. They paint a picture that depicts the company winning only by the individual person winning as well. Leaders get buy-in from the individual by tuning him or her into their own favorite radio station, W. IIFM, what's in it for me? A good leader can get people to want to hit their goal for their own reasons, not for the leader or for the company. Of course, the goals ought to be congruent for all involved. But when you motivate the person by that which motivates him, you essentially connect the person's own desire to that of the company. Thus, he takes ownership of the task at hand and will be far more self-motivated and need less prodding to do the job well. Do you see how this applies to building a network marketing organization? If you try to manage your team, you, they will see that you are only looking out for your goals, what you want them to do and how much money you want them to make you. I often see most network networkers fall into a management mode. They stop doing the recruiting and selling themselves and turn to, be, turn to trying to be a dictator over their team by telling everyone what they ought to be doing. The team soon turns on this upline manager, but usually not in a mutiny. What generally happens is that they just fade away and drop out of business. They did not join this industry to have a boss, and they certainly won't be inspired by one to stick around or produce. Leaders in our industry are those who actually care about the dreams and desires of their team. Leaders guide, they don't dictate. They try to help their team members see the reasons what to want to do certain activities. They don't expect them to do them. They don't expect them to do them. Leaders are good at selling their team on the vision of the company, the team and the person. Leaders elicit others to rise up and perform at their optimal potential. How do leaders do this? They get into the head of each person, figure out what makes that person tick, then align find their rudder to guide the ship in the same direction as the team and the overall goals. That creates congruence between the team and all team members. A good leader knows the why, reason the person is building this business. 
of each and every person he or she is leading. You must focus on building people instead of getting sales. A leader wants to create other leaders. Your goal should be to duplicate yourself. And the ultimate success to have many people under you out earn you and get more recognition than you. That is when you know you have succeeded there. Here's a list of what leaders must do. Leaders must solve problems, turn challenges into positives, keep downline on track and plug into the system, promote calls, events, promotions, run contests for the team, help people set goals, inspire, motivate using stories, teach how to read personal development books and promote the same. Be a good financial example by being smart with their money. Build team culture. Never fractured from the upline or system. Always edify. Thus will get edified. Allow themselves to be led. Even Michael Jordan had a coach. Be responsible. Be accessible. Be reliable. Be empowering. Be caring. Track their business. Know their numbers. Help track downlines, business, or goals. Not want to remain a follower. Be in pursuit of mastery. Become a better speaker. Calls, PBRs, PCC, PZC, briefings, trainings. Recognize others for accomplishments. Give away credit. Accept blame. Not get content or complacent. Raise the lead for their team. Sit in the front row at events, not stand in the back being cool. Help make things happen. Communicate massively. Connect massively. Remember that life is going to tear your people's focus away from their business. Life happens and we cannot stop that. But as leader, you must know this and constantly distract your team from their distractions. In other words, if someone is going through a divorce, a leader will help him or her focus on the positive or their business instead of dwelling on the loss of their life. Think of all the distraction people have. Football, TV shows, kids' activities, illness, relationship troubles, family commitments, vacations, bad weather, lack of money, jobs, car issues, etc. We cannot stop these things from being true but we can keep bringing their attention back onto their network marketing business by focusing them on doing the activities required to win here, they will eventually succeed. And as you can imagine, success brings a certain ease. More money and more freedom will make people's problems go away and others easier to handle. And living life with more passion will stem from the existing in this personal development environment we are entrenched in. How to paint the vision. Where there is no vision, the people perish. We've all heard this, but most do not understand how to live by it. Few people in the world have ever sat down for even an hour to design their life. They have no connection to a vision that drives them. They do not wake up in the sense of purpose each morning, raring to go conquer the world and summit the mountain. Monotony and a feeling of being unfulfilled often strain their lives. This is because they lack a vision. Creating a vision should be taught in school, but it's not. Parents with no vision certainly cannot teach it to their children. Helen Keller was asked decades ago what could be worse than being blind. Her response was, the only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. First, you must have a personal vision before you can paint one for your team members. So let me paint the vision of your future for you. And you copy this with your team. Let's look out several years from now. Your life took an amazing turn from the for, for the best when you started your new network marketing business. That decision coupled with solid work ethic put you in this place you are now. 
monetarily, you have more than you can spend. Just the interest and dividends coming passively from your investments are more than you ever made working full-time in your past. Your income flows from the efforts of others now and from a huge customer base that you build over the years. You never look at the price when reading the menus while dining out. You take an exotic vacation every three months to someplace new and exciting. You walk new beaches around the world on weekdays when others are stuck in the office and build back home, buildings back home. Speaking of your income, you have three of them, each in different locals and decked with lavish decor that you spend laboring over with care. Your family enjoys time in different homes and each feels so very homey. You have true time freedom and set your own schedule to satisfy your every whim. You take mission trips. You give your time to charitable, charitable causes that make your heart beat and bring tears to your eyes. You give to your church more money than you ever made in a year from your job. You have to put you have put in a place a legacy that you will survive you that will be enjoyed and empowered many generations after you the respect and admiration you receive from your family and friends make you feel so proud yet humble all of the worldly things have had an inverse effect on you the trappings of your success were pride invoking along the way but now that you are on the other side of money and success, you give the credit upward and understand to whom you belong. Aldana is, is absolutely priceless. These last two pages, I highlighted in a red color. If we have a vision, what will happen to us? We have to create this vision if you don't have a vision. You have to think about your future and you have to think about your potential, what might happen if there is always if statement, always. So I think we should stop here just because it's so, so powerful. At least I feel so powerful. Anybody has any question, any comments, what just Iris finished to read these two pages? Um, I will comment first, Alex. Go ahead. Um, these two pages, it's really like people just think about it, but they never really think about it long. This one is very detailed and um, it speaks to like the emotions of how would you feel when you get to that point. But uh, most people don't even bother making um, the effort to actually really don't know how to make a vision actually so i think that's my point people don't really know what a vision is and this is um giving this as an example for all of us i think it's very good so we can work on our each our own vision um perfectly like this absolutely correct Alex. absolutely that's why again that's my personal opinion to me it's a super powerful Super, super powerful. Anybody else? Isaac, please unmute your microphone and speak up. Yes, uh, hello again. Uh, when I heard that, uh, not everything was, I was not connecting with everything, but I was connecting with something. And that's what's, that's what's valuable. Like Iris just said, we can build our own vision list but this is like like a skeleton like an example or yeah that that's basically it really? and nobody 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 has identical vision list and that's the beauty of it each of us has different one yeah but we are different it's not a problem we are thank different. god thank god we are absolutely <laughs> desire different intention whatever it is it's up to you it's not up to me it's your vision Ludmila, please speak up on mute your microphone. Ludmila. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I know that our leader uh, have a very similar uh, vision. And uh, when they share, it's very similar to this uh, statement. And what I sometimes uh, just bother me, 
that probably it's for them, not for me. Probably I didn't see and I didn't believe for myself uh, enough to reach this goal. That's it. Okay, thank you very much. And I would like to ask everybody next time when you connect to webinar, please do like at least like uh, Nina, Helen, Iris, put your first name, last name and the state. Because I hope and we will do everything, whatever we can to be to have more people. I, I don't want to call person like a, B or C, G. I would like to have a name and the last name, first name and the last name. So do yourself a favor and do a favor to me also. And I would like to share it with you. You see on the bottom, 70% of the book is done. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, on average, we read like about seven to 8% per session. So I estimate like additional four sessions. It doesn't matter how many sessions, but we should invite other people. And again, there are recording available. Encourage people to join. And I also would like to ask you when you go on YouTube canal, please make a comments and click on the like. Make a comments and click on the like. There's already many video and valuable information available for everybody. All right, I would like to say thank you, readers, first of all, Isaac, Helen, and Iris, and I'll see you next Monday. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.